I just made up a flowchart of my battery selection testing procedure. I thought I'd show you how, how I do it. This is just how I do it. It's not necessarily the best process. You will have slightly different requirements for your process. But I thought I'd show you mine so that you can um, use it to compare, optimize, change, whatever you like. There's a copy of this PDF, this whole PDF, on my website, myonlinediary.com, um, which you're welcome to download and play with. And I'll just whiz through it. Uh, step one, over the batteries and cut off the BMS and the connecting wires. And then we come to a question. Are the cells in pairs? So if they are not, I put the, put the whole battery aside and leave it till some later time. If they are, then I have a quick look over them to see if they're in good condition and um, if there's any problems, so any mottling, is there any denting, any scratches, uh, there, is there any rust on the end, that's all another bad sign. Um, if there's any problems, I discard and recycle the, um, the cells. Next, uh, so assuming that they are in pairs, then I move on, assuming they look okay, I move on and uh, separate the cells into pairs and trim the excess. So I trim them so that I've got nice um, clean edges on the wall, like that, and that, and so on. Then the next thing I do is measure the voltage and write it on the negative end. Now for me it's really important to always write it in the same place. Um, if I write it at the negative end, then I don't have to think when I'm plugging into the charger. Um, and that's a system that seems to work for me quite nicely. Now this is a step that you could, if you were in a rush, if you didn't care, you could choose to skip that step entirely and just rely on the charger to tell you whether or not they are good enough to proceed down the, down the process. Uh, I do measure them, as you can see, but um, you could save yourself a little bit of time um, by not charging them. Next, I put them in my charger, that thing over there, put lots of those in, and then I move on to, so I put them in, in the in the TP4057 charging uh, bank and I look to see whether the green LED has turned to red. If it turns to red that means that the TP4056 charger thinks there's a good battery in there, good enough to charge and it started charging. If it stays green then there are two possible reasons. One is um, it is so dead that the charger can't do anything with it. Uh, the other option is, possibility is that the voltage is actually so high that the charger won't charge it. And generally somewhere over 4 volts the TP4056 module won't charge your cells. And in that case I can skip the whole charging step and go straight to um, a step further down here. Um, if it doesn't turn to red and it's not over 4 volts then there's something wrong with it and I put it aside in a box to think about later. Once it's in the charger and charging I wait four to eight hours. Normally I'll throw them in the charger and then go off to work and come back eight to ten hours later. Then has the LED changed from red to green? So when the charger has successfully charged the cell or the pair, uh, it switches to green which means as far as I'm concerned I can move on. If it hasn't, 
Then the next question is, does it get warm? If it's warm to the touch, um, and what I do is I just go like that. Is that warm? Uh, yes or no. If it's warm, then I discard those cells. I discard those cells and send them back to the recycler. If it's not warm, then there's something else mysterious going on. Um, and I would put them in a special little box, which um, I might get back to one day. Or if I run out of patience, I'll toss those back to the recycler, along with the ones that got warm. Um, so once I've charged, successfully charged the, the cells, I then measure the internal resistance with my eye charger setup like that, throw them all in there and measure the internal resistance and that is another skip, step that you could if you were, um, didn't care about internal resistance you could skip that there is some debate about how useful that step is then I measure the capacity by discharging from fully charged down to 3 volts once I've got the capacity, I write that on the cell and I can pull those out and add them to the cells that I've already done. And I sort them by from highest to lowest. So I have a big, huge collection with all the cells. Once I've got enough, then I can actually start building up the pack. And that's my process. I will also provide a link to the source file for this flowchart so that you can play with it yourself and edit and fiddle to your heart's content, make your own copies. Uh, I created it on a website called draw.io, um, so I'll put the link to the source file for that in the links down, down below as well. hope that's helpful to you. Um, Thanks for watching, catch you next time.